So we've had a fairly broad understanding of what sort of data is available to us as social media strategists. We can access it, maybe visualize it, and interrogate it to some degree. But how do we make logical sense out of it? How do we integrate social media data into an effective social media campaign? I spoke with Joe Cothrell from Lithium, one of the leading global social marketing and customer service analytics providers. He cleared up a few issues surrounding how to read the data, what data is useful, and how data can sit alongside effective community management. If you could take me through um, your role, what it is that Lithium does and your role within, within the organization. We're a software company. We have created a platform for organizations to help create and manage communities of members, customers, partners, etc. How does data analytics uh, become involved in your role? There's so much data around how people interact and what people are interacting about and whether people's interactions are successful, et cetera, which is, you know, if you think about it, we actually don't have the same data for geographical communities or local communities in, in general. And so it creates lots of opportunities for understanding whether communities work well, um, whether they're productive for users, whether people are successful in using them and whether they're accomplishing their goals. Um, we kind of distinguish between data, metrics, and analytics. So when we think about data uh, and communities, really there are two kinds of data that we think about. Uh, quantitative data, uh, that's data about the kinds of things people are doing online, looking, posting, rating, literally any feature you, that you allow a user to use in an online community creates data or should create data in the system that helps you track whether they're doing it or not. But on the qualitative side, of course, a lot of what's happening in community is around content, conversations, uh, content that users are posting, video, uh, images, uh, even sometimes sharing applications. Uh, all of that content too is data in the system and, and all of it has insights that it can, that it can share too. Um, so we always have to think about, when we think about data in the system, the, the quantitative and the qualitative part, both the numbers that come out of the system and then the insights that are sometimes in the form of, of words or opinions or, uh, or topics that people are talking about. So that's kind of where data analytics uh, begins for us is to understand what is the data. How might I use that data to engage my community of, of users? Before you actually start looking at the metrics, you kind of have to step back and say, what actually are my objectives in this system? Why did I create the community? What am I trying to accomplish? And generally what we find is there are almost two levels of metrics. There are what we call operational metrics. Those are the metrics that have to do with what users are doing in the system at any given point in time. They help you understand, first of all, whether people are using the system, uh, how often they're using the system, what kinds of things they're doing in the system. But then there are, are more results-oriented metrics that might have to do with why you created the thing in the first place. In general, with most communities, the goals really um, transcend the platform itself. Is it fair to say that it's an iterative type of process where you might get some sort of analytics back and then you refine what it, what it, what it is you're doing and then you use the analytics to, to then develop your, your, say, social media strategy or the purpose of what your community might be there? I think that's absolutely right. Um, your measurement strategy will change over time. Sometimes it changes because your objectives for the community, your goals have changed based on the stage of maturity of your community. In the first hour, day, week, month, generally you're just trying to get the engine running. So the kinds of metrics that you're measuring are very basic, right? Are people who are coming to the community registering, a simple ratio of visits to registered members. Are people who are registering participating, right? A simple ratio of members at any given time and, and posts, for example, in the system. Are people getting an answer to their question if it's a forum discussion, right? A ratio of initial posts or topics to replies. And you're, so you, in the early days, you're building that just to understand, gosh, are most people getting an answer? Are most people who are coming here at least exploring the, the process of measuring it. And, 
And that in the early days, you're simply, again, trying to get those to a certain level of, of, uh, of health, let's just say. But then once you, you've got your community healthy and growing, then you can move on to basically say, okay, where do I want to direct this community for its benefit and for ours? So it's a really good, um, I think, overview of what's happening in the, in the data metrics analytics environment at the moment. Where do you see all of this heading towards within the next five to 10 years? You know, I've been, do- I've been doing this for almost 20 years since the mid 90s. And one of the things that's always frustrated me about all these platforms is I always joke uh, and developers always hate when I say this, but I say, you know, the, your social platform can answer any question you have as long as that question is not, who are my users and what are they saying? Right, because you could never tell who my users were because it was largely pseudonymous, because it wasn't linked to a database of of users we could validate. Right, I mean, online interaction is often you don't know who you're dealing with. Right, so that's one analytic challenge is to better understand. Even if you know their identity, you might know not know their needs and their preferences and their interests and their expertise. All of those things you really need to know, I think, as a community manager. But, um, but there's another aspect of that as well, which is the what are they saying? And you might say, well, wait a minute, can't you tell what people are saying? Isn't it all public out there? But it's the big data problem. Yeah, you can find out what they're saying if you have a week to spend reading everybody's opinions, right? But what, how are the platforms helping us understand? How are they teasing out hot topics you know, themes that are exciting people, themes that are making people angry, you know, valuable content that when people read helps them solve problems or move on to the next level of proficiency. For most people creating communities, you know, we want to be respectful of their privacy and we want to create profiles, but allow them to manage those profiles so they can control what they reveal to us. Uh, And then on the content side, um, it's just, it's, it's, the text analytics challenge is taking a vast amount of unstructured data and, and creating meaning from that. And that's a hard computer science problem. And anybody who tells you that that's solved is wrong. <laughs> it's, it's a work in progress. So, so I, those are the two things to me. Those are the, and not only those are the questions to me, right? These are the ones you must answer. Jay makes some great points about how data can enable us to identify fundamental issues with online communities, such as how many people are logging on, what do they click on, and where do they go when they're on the site. But Joe also notes this may indicate broader concepts, like are they happy with the community, if they're successful using the site, and if the users are accomplishing their goals. What is of particular interest here is how Joe notes you can learn to read your community through the data with more and more experience. That is, a more experienced community manager will look at the data and be able to identify particular patterns. Ultimately, data is a way to continually improve your site or platforms.